So inside this very large box is a very unique two-wheel drive rare motorcycle that has not been ran in 45 years. It's actually owned by Ed from Matt's Off-Road Recovery. So Matt asked if we could restore this thing to running condition for Ed. Now, I don't think Matt knows our track record for restoring motorcycles because we're currently working on a couple and none of them are anywhere close to being completed. But I'm sure this one's gonna be different. So all he asked was that we get this thing running in mechanical condition and someone else is gonna paint it. I might have a few more ideas. We knew the Rocom was coming, but what we didn't know was that it was getting delivered by an old friend, Holly and Walter of Mischief Maker TV. It's you guys, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Is that a new truck? These two are super awesome people and have one of the sickest rock crawling Jeeps around. Way cooler than my boring old scramble. Let's pop it open. Let me get one of them drills. Oh, the, the small ones aren't doing anything. It's the big ones. You grab the big ones. There's a couple, there's a couple like one inch screws in here that they're just, they were there before. I want to see, I want to see, I want to see. Oh, oh, oh man. Man, look at that. Nice. So I'm gonna tell you everything I know about the Rokon in the next 30 seconds. It's two wheel drive. That's actually the brake front drive for the front wheel. Let's say there's a drive shaft that comes in here. You see that? Yeah, it runs right up the center tube of the frame. This is a two stroke. They weren't all two strokes. Later they use like polar motors. And also, I think these wheels or the rubber, this was a storage, you can store fuel in here. And these things could float across the ocean or a water. They the, would, whole, the whole ocean. They would lay them over and they would just float them across uh, rivers and stuff like that. Wow. That is all I know about the Rokon. I've never had one. I've actually never, I've never seen one. This is the first one I've ever seen. I've seen thousands, millions of motorcycles. First one I've ever seen. And I'm really, really excited about it. Uh, they still make them. Jay Leno's got one. The coolest people I know have one. Jay Leno and Ed. I mean, the first thing we gotta do is get it running. I think we can get this thing fired up today. Yeah, as long as we have compression. It's a little two spark, we should be good. It's a little two-stroke engine. What is it, a Chrysler? Like a little two-stroke Chrysler. I think it's what, I think it's what they were saying, yeah. What, what do you think's in here? You have a drill? Extra parts. Ed, I like your strap job. And then we realized that inside the big box was a little box, possibly a gift from Ed to me. Two oh, new carbs. A yeah. couple inline fuel filters, and here's a petcock. Yeah, here, this is a petcock too. Oh, cool. Trailbreaker goes anywhere. Anywhere. <laughs> I got my story straight. Ed was using this in his old prospecting days. Okay. Ed was a prospector. Tell you what, would it make sense to try to give it a few kicks or pulse while it's all strapped in? I guess we could. Just drop the drop the back and okay. I don't know. Unless I mean, we can put it up on the table there too. If that makes you happy, Craig. So that's what we did. We finished disassembling the box to try to get this thing to fire up right here, right now. This tank was creamed. Cream tank sealant. Hmm. Let's see how good the cream lasts. I don't think it lasts as long as, they, uh, as we were hoping it would. It looks pretty rusty in there. Craig, my goal is to ride this bike today. Okay. For the first time in 45 years. So I, he's had it fired up. Let's see if it's got any good compression. So the first big question is, is the engine locked up? We're gonna find that out right now. It's good. Uh, it feels like it's got compression. It feels like it has some compression. Yank it, Craig. Nice. Yank that thing. You would know, you're the compression guy. Manufactured by Rokon Inc., New Hampshire. I don't think this is the, uh, there, I don't think there's a transmission on this. I think it's just a uh, centrifugal clutch. And I would guess this is how you engage or disengage four-wheel drive. It's got three settings. 
No, that's your shifter. These do have these, the gears. Yes, these have gears. I'm pretty sure. I will say that that feels nice and it's definitely going into the, the different gears pretty well. So before you take anything apart, the last thing you want to do is take it all apart, clean everything out, put it back together, and then realize the engine doesn't work. So you've got to get it running first. That's that's what we're gonna do. And I think today we're gonna to get this thing fired up. And today we're gonna to ride this thing for the first time in 45 years. It's one way to do it. Sharp knife. Sharp knife. The first number is 69, because it's a 1969. The other number is 1410. I have no idea what that means. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's the 1410th one made, I don't know. Well, the problem is gonna arise is when we have to replace parts. If we have to replace parts, we gotta find them used. We gotta make sure that that one's not broken. We might have to get some stuff like custom milled, custom fabbed. You know, I really love how they how they designed you know older, unique stuff like this. This is this was made for off road. It's made to be like one of the most off road capable motorcycles of all time. Travel anywhere, goes anywhere. They made these pegs so to flip up. That's how they flip up. It's cool. It's a simple design. It's probably comfortable to ride. Instead of it flipping up like this, the whole mechanism just pops up and bashes your starter. Oh, it's wet. It was getting some fuel. So after you confirm that the engine is not locked up, the next thing to do is to check for spark. And the louder your friend yells, the better the spark. Ah! Yeah, we got spark. <laughs> <laughs> that's a strong amount of spark. Craig, you think that's it strong? Is. Amount of yeah. Blue, uh, yeah, yep, I'm liking that. You gotta appreciate how simple it is because when you're going these places, you know, we've had this, I've had this discussion with multiple people tons of times. These new bikes where there's more technology, it's just more stuff to break. This is a very, very simple bike, less things to break. Is this the most capable off-road bike ever? It, it very well possibly could be. I think this, I think if you pop this thing open, it's just a big empty cavity in here. Whiskey will come out. Maybe whiskey will come out. You would think there'd be a toolkit somewhere on here, wouldn't you? What is the purpose of this tool? Is it something special with that handle? Here we go, I got a new spark plug for you. This is when you bought NGK and there was like a Japanese. I got the throttle, do you want to give it some pulls or some kicks? Even though it felt like it had compression, we wanted to put a compression gauge on it to see how much it really had. Later we found out that it should be around 220 PSI. It doesn't look horrible. I, what I saw in videos, they would lay it down and float it across like uh, water. So then you would shut this, seal all the fluids out, shut that, turn the pet cock off, lay the thing down, float it across the water. Let's try this again. Give it some kicks. So we're at 100 and about 70 pounds, 100 and, yeah, 170 pounds of compression. That's really strong. Yeah, that's good. I want to see that port bridge. Okay, I think that's just reflection, cool. I think this is where you can store fuel. Yes, the big old hollow. So I don't know how the, how they plan for you to get the the fluid out of there and into your gas tank, but it's a pretty. I bet you fit a couple gallons in there. And same thing with the front. It's a nice smell. Craig, smell this. Take a whiff. Take a whiff. <sighs> Gotta get it all up in there. They say the sense that is the most directly connected with memory is smell. And one of the best things about these old motorcycles is the smell. So take a whiff, make a memory. Say low pr blood pressure, I'm gonna fall over. Wait, you need food? I got lightheaded. You need food? Nah. Yeah. I gotta take care of Craig, you know what I mean? Craig doesn't take care of himself. When he's at home, his wife 24 seven takes care of him. When he's here, he's my responsibility. Look at him. You don't have to worry about me, I'm good. You guys saw this bottle in the last video, it was all gross and gross. That was your bottle. I take care of my bottles. Do you still have that cutter in your pocket? 
If I throw it down. It hit me right in the shin. This looks like a 90s quality of like a 90s um, Christian music video. DC top. <laughs> you see it? <coughs> I don't know if they've named this thing yet. I would like to throw out the name Baby Nugget or uh, Gold Flake. Baby Banana. Because this kind of goes, well, this goes with the Gold Nugget. No, no, look at that. Look at that. Look at all these dropping. <laughs> did you use the same, this mm. ratio? I did. Good so move. smart. You ready? Yeah. Well, let's find a choke. The choke. So let's see. I can do it with my hand, though. Is that your own throttle there? Yeah. Okay, cool. This is a choke. Off, I think. Or is it one way, other way? Okay. Guess how many pools is going to take us for us to fire this thing up? Craig, you have a guess? Six. Six pools. No, it's probably going to be like 140, but... Was that 10 kicks? I was told this thing has a 1 to 100 gear ratio, which means... If it's in gear when it fires up, it's gonna walk up like this. Five, six, point seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, <laughs> thirty six, thirty seven. Oh, that sounded pretty good. That's it. Too tired for a high five? Nope. <laughs> Going to the 170 pools and kicks. Sounded good though. It did. Let's see if we can get this thing running on its own without spraying stuff. That was actually. It, it was. Uh, it was. I... Cool. Let's go grab lunch. <laughs> Alright, we're Craig's working on that. Let's gonna see if we can throw enough air in here to get the. Get the bead to tire to sit, sit on the bead. Look, the valve covers have a little uh, Schrader valve tool on the end of it. Craig, you see that? This just kind of slid out, so now it's actually sat on there properly. I don't want this as us. What? What is going on with your phone today? Craig, I'm calling Matt. Tell him we broke the Rokon. Mm, unavailable. Dietz. Sure, why not? Sounds German to me. Looks like diets. Diets. Hey. What's up, Matt? Finally worked. It worked. Hey, we got it to uh, we got the Rokon to fire up. Okay. So it runs. Just to uh, just to clarify, what? Specifically, what are we um, working on and what are we not working on? Um, you're just working on all mechanical. Okay. The, uh, the motor is going to look brand new or is, that, is he going to prep that too? Or is that to us? I don't know because I haven't looked at it and thought about it. Okay. I, I was thinking when it leaves our shop, the motor looks brand new and the, everything that runs, and it runs perfect when it leaves our shop. But we're not gonna work, we're not gonna deal with any paint or any dance. Well, then that way we can put gas in it. I'll talk to the guy that would do it and see if he has to, if he can leave all the exterior paint on the tank. And if he can, we'll get the inside of the tank restored. That way we can put gas in it and run it and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Cool, sounds good. Awesome. All right, see you later, Matt. Okay, yeah, thanks, bye. Why do doctors wear masks? Because if they make a mistake, then you don't know who they are. Classic doctor joke. These kids are hilarious. Here's some unzipped zip ties, your oh, highness. Thank you. Earlier we got it running, but now that we're ready to attempt to drive it and see if the transmission and drive works properly, we're having an issue getting it to fire up again. Possibly the curse of the rope. Look out. Da -da 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 -da. Do you see those reflexes? <laughs> with with Craig dropping the thing. <laughs> I think this is bad. I think this is Matt's. 
Matt's plan the whole time to sabotaging our, our shop. And I also think it's a good excuse for me to pick that whole thing up and move it over there. Cause I just mopped these floors for the first time in like two years this weekend. Pretty sure that when Sean was kicking it, he uh, knocked the bottle off the thing with his arm. I love that smell, it's like burnt mouse pee. Do you like that smell? Yeah, it always smells the same when you fire up an old dirt bike after it's been sitting for a while. It does have that mouse pee smell, doesn't it? Yeah. So we got this 53 year old motorcycle running after it sat for 45 years. And even though it was kind of geriatric, with me holding the bike's fluids while I slowly walk next to it, this is only the beginning. And we're gonna do our very best to emulate what God does to our soul when we accept him. We're gonna restore this Rokon for Ed, hopefully in better than new condition. 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone and the new is here. Well, you said you wanted to drive him before the day. We did it. I guess we're done now. Let's throw it back in the crate, should be back to uh, Sweet. Should we, should we sign it first? Yeah. All right, so we got it running and we got it riding on its own two horses, two wheels. It was questionable, but it moved on its own power. We have a lot of stuff to do, probably rebuild that engine, figure out which one of these cars worked the best, and um, stay tuned, we'll see you guys next time. It's a good day. Smash that. We gotta, we gotta order some parts.